Welcome to AWS Elastic Beanstalk with A.NET application. My name is Firas Abrash, and this is a presentation for CSCIE 90 Cloud Computing, Fall 2014 for Harvard University Extension School. Amazon Web Service Elastic Beanstalk is used to deploy and manage web application on AWS Cloud. The AWS Elastic Beanstalk can be used to deploy applications developed in many programming languages such as Java, .NET, PHP, Python, and many more. The purpose of AWS Elastic Beanstalk is to handle application deployment and provision resources efficiently without much knowledge of other AWS services. AWS Beanstalk enable application developer to focus on their application code and it will leverage AWS services such as EC2, S3 storage, simple notification service, SNS, load balancing, auto scaling, and application health monitoring. There are three steps to be done before migrating the application to AWS. On the main page for AWS, go to menu, Developer, Download. This is the page where the SDKs for differ different programming languages can be downloaded. You can download for Java, .NET, Node.js, Ruby, Python, PHP. If you are using the Visual Studio, go the IDE toolkit for Visual Studio. There's documentation on how to install the toolkit, videos, start, and how to develop and configure. After installation and configuring access keys and profile, open Visual Studio and go to View, AWS Explorer, the list of services by AWS on Microsoft Visual Studio. First, let's go to Amazon RDS. On the DB instance, right click on DB instance and launch DB instance. This is where you can select the DB engine. I'm going to select SQL Server Express Edition. You can select the version. There's 2008 R2 and 2012 version. I'm going to select the latest. Instance class type, I'm going to select the medium. Username and password. I'm going to make them simple. If I click refresh, you will see that there's an error here next to the DP instance now, and the last instance has been is being created. If I double click on it, it says created, and you get all kind of information. While the instance is being created, I will open the Microsoft SQL Server local on my machine. I'll go to the database that I would like to import, which is related to the application. This is the database that the application is pulling data from. Right click on the, the CV new, and I will go to task generate scripts. This will generate a script to import all the data inside this database. Click Next. I'm going to have all the tables, so I'm just going to keep it as is. Go to Advanced on the Set Script Options and make sure that you are the script will be importing schema and data together. 
then define where you want the script to be imported to. This is pretty straightforward. Going to cancel. After the script has been created, I will refresh the status of the DB instance. It's taking some time. It's now backing up. Now I get the endpoint for the RDB instance. This could this is useful. We can click on the DB instance in the property. I can copy that endpoint and then I can open the web.config in my .NET application. So now the connection string that I have now is pointing to my local database. I'm going to comment this connection string and I'm going to have a new one with a copied endpoint. It should look something like this. The connection string, I have the endpoint here the port number and then I have the name of the database the username and the password that I have configured when I have set up the DB instance I will save it go back to the DB instance status it's still backing up the instance now is ready. I'll right click on it, create SQL Server database. This will create a data connection and it's empty now. The address is rds.firasinstance.cvnew. Now we need to import the data and the schema. Open file. And connect. So our name will be the same endpoint that we have for the new instance. Connect. So the data now is empty. Going to modify the script a little bit. I will delete on the top. And then I will run the script. After selecting the new CV new, you will see that it's creating tables, refresh, and here are the data. And check the data by showing the data table. Success. So now, in order to publish the application on AWS, right-click on the project, Publish to AWS. Make sure that you have your profile correct, region, and then you are going to deploy a new application with template. So select the AWS Elastic Beanstalk. Next, I'm going to say database web application. This is the application version. We can say incremental deployment. This way we can 
if there is an update, it will update it incrementally. Next, name the application, save grass CV. And the type here, you can either select a single instance or you can select a load balancing auto scaling. The purpose of this presentation is to show that we can, by using Beanstalk, can provision resources such as load balancing and auto scaling. Check domain. The URL is available. Next. And this is the container type, 64-bit Windows ser Server 2012, running IIS 8.5. And you can select all the instance type and the key pair, finish. And this is the preview, deploy. So now, in order to check what's going on on AWS, we click View, AWS Explorer. And now, under the Events section, it's launching, it's creating the environment. After several minutes, the application is being deployed. Beanstalk has created load balancers, security groups, auto scaling, EC2. All the infrastructure has been handled by uh, the Elastic Beanstalk. The developer does not have to worry about anything other than the code. This is the status. It's saying that the environment is healthy, and this is the URL. It's very important to have a default ASPX page. Uh, if that page is not there, the load balancer will not be able to check and it will fail. Click on the URL and this is the pages. We have all these records. You can delete, you can add. Beanstalk gives also the ability to update the application very easily. I'll go to, I will select one of the pages. And I'm going to say here, I will save it. So now after I have done the update, I can right click on my application and I will say republish. Just deploy. I go to the environment status page. I will see that the environment update is starting. Deploying a new version. Successful. I go to the page that I'll update. I'll see the update over there. The last thing about Beanstalk is if I want to terminate my application and everything else, I don't have to go through the hassle of terminating each of the created instance, such as load balancing, security groups, auto scaling. I don't need to worry about any of these. I just go to the environment. I will just say terminate. After a few minutes, Beanstalk has been terminated. It has uh, deleted the CloudWatch, the auto-scaling, the EC2 instance, the load balancing, the SNS topics, and the status is terminated. We can refresh. You can see that the only thing that has not been deleted is that the application the environment has been deleted, so the application is still there. I hope this presentation was beneficial. Thank you.